Hi folks, today I'm going to be talking about a comet that was recently discovered by the Stereo spacecraft. The comet's name is C2014-C2 Stereo, and you can see it here in these images from Stereo Head HI1, which were shot on February 2nd, uh, but the comet's quite, quite faint, uh, quite small, and hard to see. So I've taken these images that I've processed from the raw data, and I've enhanced their contrast dramatically to make it easier to see. And now you can see the comet moving up into the left here. Now, some people on YouTube have noticed this. In the uh, images you see online on the stereo website, uh, the contrast is typically uh, dramatically enhanced. And um, uh, you can also see in my images here these dark spots, which aren't necessarily what you see in the, in the images on the website. It's because I did my own processing here. I used uh, images from a previous day to subtract from the current day uh, in order to compensate for the glare from the sun. And so any place where the planets had been is uh, where you will see dark spots on the current images. I've also aligned the images on the stars so the stars aren't moving and this makes it a little bit easier to see the motion of the comet against the stars. I've also created a version here which I've uh, uh, cropped and blown up on the comet so you can see in a little better detail there. You can see the comet's tail is pointed away from the sun as you would expect but it's not terribly long and it's not terribly big. Uh, just how big it is is dependent upon of course how far away it is and in this case, it's actually much closer to the stereo spacecraft than it is to Earth. That's the only reason it looks as significant as it does there. Uh, when it becomes visible to us in the northern hemisphere in a few days, uh, it's only going to be about magnitude 12 or 13, somewhere around there probably. Uh, so we're talking about a t an object that is telescope only. You, you can't see it by naked eye uh, or even with binoculars unless you have ridiculously large binoculars. Um, so in order to determine just how big this comet is, it's necessary to do astrometry on it and measure the angular size precisely. Unfortunately, uh, the comet being as small as it is, it's at about the resolution limit of the stereo's uh, uh, stereo spacecraft uh, imager in terms of diameter. It's only a pixel or two across, and so it's difficult to make an exact measurement. Uh, approximately, it's about 188 arc seconds across. But again, we're, we're, we're working close to the limit of the resolution of the imager here. And so it actually might be a bit smaller than that. This might be uh, uh, overestimating the size a little bit. But assuming that's true, it would be about 46,000 kilometers wide based on the distance. And the tail would be about uh, 200,000 kilometers long. That sounds big, especially compared to, si say, the diameter of the Earth. But that's not the size of the physical nucleus, that's just the size of the gas and the dust surrounding the comet. Because that gas and dust is not gravitationally bound to the comet's nucleus, it, keep, it keeps expanding and the tail keeps growing as it's blown by the solar wind away from the sun. And so it's just a matter of how much material is available to form a tail in a coma uh, that will uh, basically determine the size. In terms of comet sizes, that's actually on the small side. Uh, a much bigger comet, which is really not even a great comet, but it's a decent comet. Comet Lovejoy is currently visible. Uh, it's currently uh, near uh, Comet Linear, as a matter of fact. In fact, uh, another amateur astronomer, Damian Peach, shot a great photo of those two comets close to each other the other day. Uh, the last photo I took of Lovejoy was on uh, January 19th. And you can see in this contrast enhanced version, uh, the angular diameter is about 247 arc seconds. And so it's, it was larger in angular size despite being farther away from Earth than uh, Comet Stereo was from the Stereo spacecraft. The end result is that the diameter uh, is about, was about 240,000 about 240, uh, kilometers that day. It was wider than this new comet is long. You could fit the entire length of that new comet within the diameter of uh, Comet Lovejoy. That's how small it is. Now, in terms of the direction, uh, some people on YouTube are looking at it saying, well, it looks to be traveling in the orbit of Ison because it's, it's headed up into the left, just as Ison's dust and debris did after it uh, left the vicinity, vicinity of the sun. Uh, and so if I rewind here back to, this is about from where my animation was, you can see uh, the comet right there. If you go in uh, Starry Night Pro and you update your, uh, your, you update your orbital elements, uh, the new comet's already in there in the database. And so you can see it traveling up and to the left there, just as it did in my animation as I fast forward through time. 
So some people were saying, well, isn't that the same as uh, Ison's orbit? And the answer there is no, it's actually nothing like Ison's orbit. But you're looking there at a two-dimensional view of space, so it's not really telling you the full story. Uh, for one thing, you can see here the stereo comet is actually much closer to the stereo spacecraft than it is to Earth. And the other thing is that the orbit looks nothing like Ison's orbit. So Ison's orbit is visible here. Let me turn that off for a second so you can see the uh, stereo comet's orbit by itself. So you can see it comes above the ecliptic for perihelion and then it'll go back down. And I say that in the future tense because it actually hasn't reached perihelion yet. You can see how dramatically different this is from Ison's orbit. And you can also see if I go back here to uh, the first view over here, you can see that uh, it hasn't actually reached perihelion yet. It will continue to get closer, and on about February 18th, it will reach perihelion. So it hasn't actually done that yet. It's just a matter of the perspective of from the perspective of stereo head. It looks like it's headed away from the sun, but if you actually measure the orbit and uh, look at it in three dimensions, it's actually getting closer to the sun currently. And it will also get uh, farther from the sun and the sky from our perspective here on Earth. And so in a few days, hopefully, it will become visible uh, from the northern hemisphere. But because of its dim magnitude, it won't be something you can see by eye. You really will need a telescope uh, to see it. And it'll be quite tricky, too, uh, because the angular separation from the sun is not that great. So with that, I hope you have a nice day.